Today, I'm going to talk to you about why, if you're bummed that the 2022 Tundra dropped its V8, this Nissan Titan, and specifically this Nissan Titan XD may be the truck for you. I'm going to show you what Nissan's done here and tell you why I almost traded my Tundra in to get one and what kept me from doing it. We're going to go ahead and take this vehicle for a drive. We're going to review the specs. We're going to take a look at the interior, the exterior, talk about some of the features. We'll do a zero to 60 on it and talk about driving impressions of it as well. So if you like or dislike this video and you have some thoughts of your own on the Titan, feel free to go ahead and share them. I'd love to hear them and feel free to hit like and subscribe if you're so inclined. Let's walk up and take a look at the first reason I would consider this truck. First reason is right here. It still has a V8 and it has a standard V8 that cranks out 400 horsepower and 413 pound feet of torque in both the XD version that you see here and the regular Titan. So I've heard it repeated from multiple reviewers and from Toyota executives themselves that they didn't go to a V6 for the fuel economy. They went to it for the greenhouse gas emissions because let's face it, their fuel economy is less than what's promised when you look out there. But let's look at this 5.6 liter from the Nissan Titan. And as we look at that, we can see it gets an A minus in greenhouse gas emissions and it gets a B minus in smog emissions. This is for a 5.6 liter that bests the Tundra's old 5.7 in both horsepower and torque by a fair amount. Nissan does recommend premium fuel to obtain those numbers with the 5.6 liter engine. However, it is not required and you drop into the 390s in both horsepower and torque if you use regular fuel, similar to the 5.7. Toyota, you had to have been able to come up with something to compete with this. This is the Nissan Titan Pro 4X XD. Pretty serious truck. Pretty serious frame that it's got on it down there. Got the bed step. The mechanical bed step is a stock feature on the Titan. It does not cost the price of five years of infotainment service. When it comes to the bed, the Titan XD does give you a crew cab with a six and a half foot bed that is now available on the Tundra as well. However, it comes with that reinforced frame that allows you to also have gooseneck hookups and it still has the 400 watt uh, charger in it and it has a pretty nifty bed rail system in it and it hasn't compromised the bed width and you can also get it available with Titan boxes and that's a pretty nice feature to have as well. A lot of those things aren't available on the new Tundra and the big miss for the new Tundra I think is that when Titan did this they reinforced the frame, they kept it with a V8, you can really use this truck to do stuff confidently. There's been a lot of discussion that the new V6 twin turbo in the Tundra will uh, outperform the V8 because of the additional 10 speed. Now certainly it's designed for improved fuel mileage, but that 3.31 final gear really causes me some concerns. And let's look at what Nissan Titan has done. The Titan has changed its gearing to a final gear of 3.69 in the standard truck and 4.08 in the XD. Look at what those final ratios come back at in the Titan versus the 2022 Tundra. The Titan blows it away with this new nine speed and its final gear ratios are vastly improved. The Titan is going to out pull, out tow the Tundra, no problem. Is it going to get the fuel mileage? No, it's not, but it's gonna accelerate through the mid range. It's gonna accelerate at the beginning and they've made a vastly superior performing truck because of it. Definitely some get up and go in this truck. Now this truck has close to 2,000 pounds of payload uh, for a truck that's not quite an HD truck, but sits somewhere above the rest of the half ton class in terms of its payload. Um, it definitely feels HD truck when you drive it. So all the good and the bad that goes with that, the bad of course is that, hey, it's got an HD truck ride to it. The good is its stability on the road is good. And right now I'm doing 85, I hope there are no police around, uh, or just came off of doing 85 and 
and this thing just hums along at that speed. So my overall driving impression of this truck is um, it's it's secure feeling on the road. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the suspension is stiffer, which you would expect in an XD truck. Um, not an HD truck, but an XD. So it's like a half ton with a very stiff suspension and a much more supportive frame. But I got to tell you, it doesn't hurt at all in acceleration. And while the ride is definitely more truck-like and less car-like, um, it's pretty impressive. When we look here, one of the things I really like, if you look down toward the bottom of that center console there, what you're going to see is that there's two little dot lights. Those are marking the trailer brake controller. I really like that. I like that those uh, two little lights are there. I also like the position of it a lot better than behind my knee in uh, my Tundra. Neither one of them do I like that you have to reach so far forward for them. But in terms of overall positioning, you can see that one. So if you're looking for it in an urgent situation, um, you have an opportunity to go there and get it visually. Mine, I don't really have much trouble with, but I know where it is because I've had to use it. So here is the rear sway bar and why well, we could see uh, some of the pumpkin and the covering on the drive axle in this Nissan Tundra Pro 4X. Looks fairly stout, not quite as stout as my Tundra. Over there we can see, uh, as you would expect in a, this XD truck, it's got some uh, pretty significant springs on it. Um, these leaf springs are much more uh, wide and uh, look a little bit more durable than the ones that my Tundra do, definitely. The uh, center council storage appears to be pretty nice here. Pretty good size, not as deep and as large as uh, what is in my second gen Tundra. But you don't need all that space, or at least I don't need all that space. Anyway, uh, a couple of cup holders up here and then some various compartments up here that I'll have to go ahead and figure out. In the bed of this Nissan, we lift up the uh, rear seat here. As you can see, we have it lifted up. There is this little nifty storage seat here. Now you can lock it and there is a key that comes to lock that. Same key as for your door, you can open it up. You have a storage space, you put this down, but unlike the Tundra, if you want a flat surface, you can roll that out and have yourself a flat surface as well at the same time. Um, that looks to be pretty nice to me right there. The jack in here is in the same position as my Tundra under underneath the rear passenger seat. However, this one looks to be a lot easier to get to than my Tundra's is. So if you need it in the evening and it's dark and you've got to change a flat tire, looks like you're going to be able to get to this one a lot easier than you are in my second gen Tundra. I really don't know where that is in the... Uh, third gen. I had not looked at that when I examined it, but here you can, you can see the underseat storage on the other side. And of course it can fold up here so that we can make it a flat bed. I'm in the back seat of the Titan and the uh, seat is uh, reclined in the all the way back position at six feet, sitting up pretty relaxed. A good amount of space in here. Again, it's not, it's not Tundra space um in terms of leg room but it's big space and seats back here are are fairly comfortable um, i don't think the seat itself is as wide as what it is in the tundra and we do have some uh usb ports back here and we also have a uh, 400 watt ac outlet here in the car which you know should be good for running your laptop in addition there's a 400 watt uh outlet in the bed like there is in the 2022 tundra so there are a lot of benefits to the nissan titan it currently offers the best warranty in the class with a bumper to bumper hundred thousand mile five-year warranty the dealership i was at actually was throwing in a two hundred fifty thousand mile unlimited lifetime powertrain warranty as well now i would have loved to have had this titan for the increased stability when towing across country, but it's got a few places where it comes up short for me. One of the first places that it comes up short has to do with towing. I travel long distances and this vehicle just doesn't have the range that it should to travel the places I like to go. I mean, honestly, it's got a 26 gallon fuel tank. I'm not sure what Nissan was thinking with that, but there's no way this truck that's almost an HD truck should have that small of a fuel tank. The other thing that I would think about is it takes premium fuel. It's going to increase my cost quite a bit. There are some other things that bother me about it. It's uh, got a pretty poor turning radius because again, effectively it operates like an HD truck. It also doesn't have the uh, room in the uh, back of the truck and the cab like uh, in the back seat of the cab like my truck does in my Tundra. 
the turning radius and the decreased uh, rear cab space are things that I could have gotten over. The range is just something that I couldn't overcome and therefore this is not the right truck for me. However, if you don't need to travel the distances I do, this may be the ideal truck for you. I certainly would select this over a V6 and it just boggles my mind that Toyota totally went away from a V8. I hope they reintroduce it at some point in time, but in the meantime, this truck is a great alternative. And because, let's face it, nobody is currently buying these at a great rate, you can get some great deals on these right now in comparison to what else is available on the market. And the features that you get in this Nissan are much greater at that same price point.